I see personally, I see women's cricket as India's number one sport. India reached the final of the 2017 Women's World Cup and really took the nation by storm. It was like all of a sudden the entire country woke up and wow, we have a national team and they're so good. And since then, women's cricket has become mainstream. I'm in conversation with someone who wears several hats. She's a former India cricketer, a journalist, she's also a digital content creator and most recently she's joined the ICC digital team as an insider. Snehal Pradhan is with me. You've played with several Indian cricket legends. What does it take to become an elite cricketer? In India especially uh, and as a woman it takes a certain amount of extra determination. Uh, we are definitely set up against a different set of obstacles as compared to boys coming in in terms of just the number of domestic games and competitions that are available to women as compared to men and especially if you're coming from a place which is out of uh, the cities and to see so many stories of so many cricketers who have come from these kind of backgrounds and have now, like you said, become legends. The Julan Goswami coming from a small town in Chakda, taking the 5 a.m. train uh, every morning to practice. Mithali Raj becoming such a legend is, is just a phenomenal achievement uh, and an example of how they can overcome multiple obstacles to make their name in the world. Through your journey, what were some of the turning points that helped you realize that you have what it takes to make it? I think I played for the state fairly quickly. It was really when uh, I was making a push for the Indian team that I realized that these are this is the kind of the fight of my life almost, where I have to put in an exceptional level of performance if I want to break in. Um, another turning point really was when I was completing my education. So before I played for India, completing my education and wondering whether I'll be able to play professionally uh, because. This is pre-BCCI, when the Women's Cricket Association of India ran the game. There was no payments for domestic cricket, there was very little pay for playing for India. So I had to consider whether this is something that I can make a career in. And the turning point really was getting a sports quota job in Western Railway. That allowed me to continue the sport, otherwise I might have been lost to the sport. I might have stopped playing cricket and gone for higher education. I might be sitting in a glass box somewhere, you know, doing corporate work rather than sitting here and being a part of this World Cup. Yeah, it's interesting that you uh, said that you've played at various levels across formats. At these various levels, what resources were available uh, to you for your game? My domestic career started around the year 2000 and I finished my career in 2015. Uh, and in 2006, the BCCI took over women's cricket. So everything changed in terms of what resources we had. Before that, I mean, even figuring out drinking water was a struggle. Uh, the place we were at, we were usually staying in dormitories, usually traveling unreserved, uh, usually playing on grounds that were not the best grounds in the city we were in. That completely transformed. At the time, we thought, oh my God, what a big deal this is. It really went on an upward graph as my career went on and as more and more resources became available to women's cricket in general. Um, towards the end of my career, we had access to physiotherapy, we had access to nutritionists, we had access to the National Cricket Academy. None of that existed before. We were our own physios, we were our own trainers, we conducted warm-ups, we massaged each other, we bandaged each other when someone was injured. So it is like two different worlds at the two ends of my career. You played during a very interesting time in women's cricket in India. Post your retirement in 2015, did you ever have some thoughts about what next? And uh, did you always know that you wanted to be in and around the sport? Yeah, I, I was always trying to figure out how can I stay connected to the game. So even like after retiring, I never felt like I was disconnected. I just felt like I transferred from almost one department to another. I chose uh, media because there was... Um, I knew I had the skills for it, I knew I had the language skills for it, the ability to write uh, was something I used to do a little bit of writing back in school so that's something I developed uh, and got into media with the intention really to give the Indian women's cricket team more coverage because I saw that there was not enough coverage for the Indian women's cricket team. I wanted to do my bit for women's cricket and that became an opportunity for me to make a living while continuing to stay connected to the game so that was the intention to get into this media side of things. Hi everyone, I am Sneha Zidhan, former India cricketer or retirement ke baad main kaam karti hu as a commentator and aapki online cricket coach You've created a very valuable online resource that helps budding cricketers improve their game. What was the intent and inspiration behind it? So yeah, my YouTube channel where I started uh, teaching cricket online and uh, a lot of people, you know, told me that after cricket, after retiring, I should get into coaching. But like I said, I, re I recognize that 
I could be a coach, fine, but a lot of other people can be a coach. What can I do that maybe other people can't do? I recognized that I had some skills in terms of uh, communication. Uh, I taught myself a lot of technical skills in learning about YouTube, learning about filming, learning about editing, and thought let's do this on YouTube. Let's teach cricket on YouTube and see. And the funda was that you know if I was coaching in person, I might coach 20 people, 50 people. But with the power of the internet and with the reach it gives me. I can coach 20,000 and that's that's an idea that really excited me. Before this Women's Cricket World Cup in India, there was the Challenger Trophy. So the best of the best as far as Indian domestic talent is concerned. And I was commentating on that tournament and to do some research on players who I knew, I didn't know, I uh, gave them a call and there was one player from uh, the northeast of India and she said there's not a lot of good coaching there so we use your YouTube videos as uh, content that we can learn from. That kind of blew my mind. <laughs> these, these girls are one step away from playing for the Indian team and it, it was interesting and really inspiring to see that the impact that these videos are having. You've done so much for the sport on and off the field. What are you personally most proud of? My work um, as a media person before 2017 because since 2017 I mean covering women's cricket has become mainstream it's become the norm everyone does it but I'm really proud of the effort that I put in into growing the sport and raising the limelight of uh, women's cricket raising the profile of women's cricket before uh, it really became uh, normal to do so and I'm so happy that it is now something that isn't necessary for me to do because there are um, so many media platforms with the focus on the girls. The girls are superstars now, which is exactly what they deserve and they deserve much more than that. But I'm proud of what we did before they became superstars.